It's no secret that you will definitely get sharper pictures with a tripod, but is there such thing as too much tripod? Hello there, Spence here again out here at the ranch. I uh, just wanted to do a little video on tripods today. Um, it's just going to kind of cover if you're shooting a DSLR or medium format film camera or large format film camera, because that's what I shoot is I have an 8x10 film camera. So I had certain requirements that I needed to um, for, for my particular uh, 8x10 setup. But again, you could definitely use this video for if you're shooting a DSLR or if you're going to be shooting a, like something like a Mamiya or Bronica that's you know medium format or even a 4x5 or 8x10 camera. So I kind of got, over the years, what I've done is I've kind of collected some tripods and they've all worked at a certain point for me. They don't go bad, so uh, one suggestion might be if you're looking for a tripod, depending upon what your needs are for a tripod, you might want to check like a Goodwill or um, one of those types of places first, because it's not uncommon that uh, people have estate sales and things like that, maybe even after the estate sale, they will just say, you know what, we just want to mess with this stuff, so we will go, just go ahead and donate the um, balance of the, of the material or they may not even have an estate sale, they may just say, we just want to get rid of it. And it goes to those, one of those kinds of places. So my wife has called me multiple times and said, hey, there's a, and uh, she, she reads the, the label. She'll say, it says like a Manfrotto. <laughs> I'm like, oh, how much is that? You know, and it's like, oh, it's 30 bucks. And I'm like, does it have the plate with it? So that might be an option for you before you go to a regular camera store or something like that. Uh, those can be kind of expensive depending upon whatever it is that you want. So for my needs as I've grown and where I am now, I wanted something that was light, number one, light, because <clears throat> again, my camera does weigh 20 pounds. It's an eight by 10 camera. And of course it has to be affordable and you know, not everybody has an unlimited budget. So, and it also had to be probably the second thing before price was stable, um, which you'll, I'll talk about that a little bit later. But those were like my, kind of my three criterias as I was going along. So what I'll do is um, I'll kind of reshift the camera angle here a little bit and I'll kind of show you the progression of what I started with and why and what I used them for and what I would recommend today if I was to start over. Um, just note that I'm not sponsored by anybody. I'm not being paid to tell you what I'm about to tell you. This is actually my money that I spent on this stuff. And this is what I use and have used and it's worked well for me. And there are some things I'll tell you that I would not buy again. So that's one of the nice things about, you know, not having any kind of sponsors is I can tell you exactly what I think. So, all right, so we'll get this all shifted around and we'll go from there. All right, so the first tripod that we're gonna look at today is one that I bought about 10 years ago when I first got into digital photography. I actually started with a Kodak 110 camera when I was seven years old. And so when I was about late 20s is when I decided to jump into uh, digital photography, kind of a little bit more serious. So of course everybody said you need a tripod. So I wasn't sure what to buy. So I kind of bought something a little heavier uh, thinking that maybe when I bought heavier lenses for birding or wildlife, something like that, that um, I would need something that was going to be able to hold the weight. So this is what I bought first. And the case I bought later, because I figured out it was an easier way to, to um, obviously to carry these things and just to have them just with a bare tripod. So this is a Quantre by Sunpack bag. Honestly, this thing is so old, I couldn't even tell you how much I paid for it or even where I got it. I'm guessing B and H. I might have even got this maybe at uh, when Wolf Camera was in business, but anyway. So case is a case on this, so it's not too bad. So here's the tripod. Now this tripod has been since discontinued. Um, it's again, it's probably 10-ish years old, maybe a little older than that. So what this uh, model was is the Manfrotto 055XPROB on the legs. So this particular one does have the flip locks, which I was really liking, and I still like them today. Uh, the only maintenance I've had to do to this particular tripod over the years is they give you a little 
uh, plastic tool that comes with it. Usually that's the first thing you lose. But um, you can screw down these little nuts a little bit and that will make these lock a little bit tighter. So over time, if this gets loose, you can just uh, tighten these down a little bit and away you go. So this one does have a center column. And then I, of course I found out I needed a head. So then I started trying to decide what kind of head did I want for my camera. I looked at the three pan heads, um, didn't get along with that real well. So then I decided, well, why don't I get a ball head? So I bought a couple different ball heads, but this is the biggest ball head that I bought. And it's, again, this one's from Manfrotto. It has been since been discontinued, but it's the 490RC4. So if you're I'm sure you can buy all this uh, used on eBay or something like that. And it's been a really sturdy, been really light tripod. And just to show you the head, here's the, the plate that goes in it. So it is, it is a quick release. This is about three inches by two inches, roughly. Um, and you can get this in, you can put the insert in for quarter 20 or for um, 3 8 16. So I have the 3 8 16 thread in here, a little... Um, screw in here for my big 8x10 camera because that's what it has is the 3816. So this basically just locks in here. I'm sure you've all seen how these work before. Nothing too fancy and there you go. So then you just loosen this and you can put this in any direction you want. Now on this particular one it is cut out here on the sides. So this is how you can do your uh, verticals or, uh, or portraits can be a little scary because your camera is now hanging off to the side so depending upon the type of camera that you have so I had a again I started with Nikon I've used all brands I don't have a particular favorite of any of them they all take great photos it's the photographer that takes a photo not the gear as many of us know so I bought a Nikon uh, 80 to 400 which is a pretty it was a pretty heavy lens and it had the uh, tripod bracket on it and the other ball head I had when I cranked it down what would happen is the lens would start to creep or I should say that the lens the tripod would start to creep a little bit so I bought this heavier ball head and when you lock this thing down let me tell you it's locked down it's solid so I've been pretty happy with this a couple of drawbacks with this it does have a center column which you may or may not uh, necessarily need um, I've become not a fan of the center column, which I'll get to a little bit later. But the one thing I have used this for, if you've seen some of my other videos where I've done like the tabletop uh, view, I can loosen this. This will come up and there's a pin here I can take and move this. Let's see if I can do it here. It's been a while. And then this I can, of course, can then shoot down. So that's kind of a nice uh, feature with that. So that is one nice deal with that. Um, it does have the legs where you can, they're uh, preset, so then of course you can put these anywhere that you want. But the one thing that did kind of bother me with this when I switched to large format, um, and I'll get a close up of this, but the head, the top of the tripod head that um, where it mounts to the actual ball head is only about two inches. So what was happening is, and again, it was, I'll, I'll get a tight up shot of this so you guys can see. So the head's actually, the tripod, um, excuse me, the ball head is actually wider than where it mounts. So when I was getting my big um, large format camera on there, the whole thing was just wobbling. And I thought, well, that's no good. And the other thing I noticed is that the legs were flexing. So when I was thinking about getting into large format photography, I thought, oh, I got this big heavy tripod, this thing is aluminum it's built to last this will be great but let me tell you my camera again is 20 pounds with the lens attached and everything it's solid mahogany and brass it's a zone six so when i get it all on here and if i need to shift something i can just watch these legs when they're extended they just they just bend and flex which is no good um, again this point right here because it's only about two inches is this is the weakest point my father was a experimental tool and die maker for 30 years 
and we were looking at these things and he said yeah he said this is your problem right here as well as of course the flexing of the legs he says you need to get this apex needs to be wider so you have a much more stable platform so I said, okay so again this is great for dslr um, if you're going to be shooting heavier lenses not a problem this is probably if i had to guess i used to know exactly what it weighed uh, put me down the record for saying about 11 12 ish pounds so it's not the lightest thing but it's not terrible either and in the bag it as you can see it collapses down into this bag you saw me take it out of here and it's uh, so this is maybe two feet so this is very compact if you're going to go hiking for the day so it's not too bad um, so yeah so that's basically the deal with this so realizing that this flexed and gave me some problems and I was starting to get some out of focus shots I had to start thinking about for large format what is it that I wanted to to replace this with because now that in large format you have to kind of scale everything up this would actually even work for 4x5 so if you're doing 4x5 or medium format no problem but if you're doing 8x10 depending upon what 8x10 you're using uh, if it's an older style like a deer door for my zone 6 this is not going to cut it um, my one of my goals is to get a lighter 8x10 camera down the road so that was another thing i was thinking while going through all of this so now i've got this big camera and i'm getting out of focus shots because the camera is just flexing and like it's even breezy today so when you open up the bellows all that's moving on this little two inch you know pivot point so i thought well okay i've had enough of going out and wasting film so i went on the large format forum and i asked the question what tripod should i get for this particular camera and of course she asked 20 different photographers their opinion they're going to give you 20 different answers However, there's one name that kept coming up uh, over and over again. They said, if you can, you know, if you can afford it and do it, that's the one to get. So let me show you what it is I ended up buying. Okay, so after all the recommendations, uh, this is what I was told to buy is a Reese tripod. In fact, I did a review on this tripod last year and June when I got it I'll link that in the uh, show notes down below so you can check that out if you want to so after I had dealt with the Manfrotto issue of uh, the tripod flexing and everything you know I was at the point of I had, I fell on the pendulum of going completely the other way so I called Reese up and I said send me the biggest heaviest most stable tripod you make and boy did they so uh, this is the case so again I had to purchase everything separately that you're about to see so they're kind of an a la carte deal uh, so you can kind of pick and choose whatever it is you want so this is the case it's obviously made for this tripod um, build quality is pretty nice uh, I talked to the owners and they send these out and have them uh, stitched by somebody I believe in Washington don't quote me on that um, but they did say that they uh, have somebody that specifically makes these cases for them. So they did a really nice job. And it is this, uh, uh, I don't know they call it, like sh uh, sheep material, woolish kind of stuff on the inside. So it won't scratch your tripod, which makes it nice. And they do have these uh, blocks on the end. I don't know if this will show up in the video or not. But they do have these huge foam blocks here in the end. And this is to keep it from shifting back and forth. So, and it does have a carry handle, and it also has, uh, if you want to throw it over your shoulder. I have used this. We'll get into that a little bit later. So this is what I went from the Manfrotto to this. Let's just move this out of the way here. There we go. So. You know, it's just, I don't know if this is even going to fit in the frame or not. It's over me. And I think we're just about going to make it, maybe. All right, so obviously it's not level or anything. But here is the Reese tripod. It's solid maple. <laughs> Keyword here is solid. Solid. 
So very, very sturdy. And let me tell you, when I put my camera on this thing, it is seriously stable, not going anywhere. Um, the only downside, one of the downsides I should say of this is it weighs with a case 25 pounds. So if you're going to go hiking more than 20 feet off from your car, you might want to think twice about this. I took this to Georgia at Old Car City with me and um, I needed a wagon to cart this and the camera around. So that's something to think about if you're, you know, want to look at one of these types of tripods. Now because it's wood, you know, um, easy to use in the winter time, doesn't get cold like the metal will um, or the aluminum, I should say. So anyway, now I, this came in two pieces, or I bought two parts. So let me just unscrew this top piece here so you guys can kind of see. Sorry, I'm kind of MIA there behind the tripod. All right, so here is, here's basically the two parts. We've got the legs, of course. And what's one thing that's nice about this, and again, I don't know if I can make this show up or not, but this kind of goes in here, so that makes it easy. It's spring-loaded to, when you get the head on there, it'll actually pop up into the hole in the bottom of the head, so that makes it really easy to attach. This particular tripod on the sides here has these little, um, so you can extend the legs anywhere you want. There's no stops. So you just put it wherever you want it, you tighten these down, and away you go. So one thing I have done with this is trying to get this together can be a little bit of a challenge. So once you get it together, these star knobs, I ended up chewing into the wood a little bit because it's so tight trying to get this in here. So I'm not sure if that was a manufacturing thing or the way it's supposed to work. Um, I would have designed that a little bit different, but it doesn't hurt the tripod as far as the performance. It's it's fine. So now this particular one, the way this works as far as getting the legs out, the other ones had the flip lock. So these are, these have a, um, like a compression system where you can loosen these and then you pull the center piece out. Sure, you can pull the center. There we go. I haven't used this in a while. So there we go. So now you can see how that works and you just tighten these back down the little clamps will then tighten squeeze this, the edges and away you go so one thing that would be nice with this is you can use this in the water or in the mud take it home hose it down dry it off and away you go so that's kind of nice there are spikes in here so you could take the leg out reverse it and then use your spikes in the ground so if you want to do that this has a six inch apex this was huge when i saw this i went holy moly this is exactly what i'm looking for i went from two inches to six inches um, so the camera's very very stable no problem so but then we have the issue of you know we got to put the camera on there i need some way to adjust things when i have the camera all set up you know maybe if i want to tilt it this way or i want to tilt it down or i need to level it or something and by the way this is the a-250 legs it's the biggest ones that they make and this i believe is a-252-2 um, head i'll look this up and i'll try to get that in the show notes for you so you have the exact information all right so here is this head again six inches to match the tripod head so Again, it's got the spring-loaded uh, spring in here. So when you get the camera on here, I can hear it pop a little bit. And then what that will do is it lets me know, oh, I'm over the hole. The tripod, I just take, and take the screw that's in here, and I can then just tighten it up. Six-inch square plate, so that's nice. And it does have all these leaf springs in here. So I can do something like this. If I needed to go vertically with my camera, I don't know, it'd be kind of scary, I think, but I would trust this, believe it or not. Uh, this thing is manufactured very, very well. And of course, that's how you can tighten that down. And then on the side over here, you got this little uh, lever here. And once that's loose, then you can go from side to side like so. Again, it's a little stiff because it's not on the tripod, but you guys get the idea. So, um, very, very stable. 
couple of downsides simply is the weight again um, 25 pounds that's that's an ugly number so this is I think a little over six pounds and these are over uh, I want to say these are 14 15 and then we've got the bag so when I weighed it on my bathroom scale it came right in around 25 pounds so this is great if you're going to be doing a studio uh, if you have a ultra large format I'm talking like 11 by 14 16 by 20 camera yeah they'd still they make those um that'd be kind of nice wouldn't it could you imagine doing a 16 by 20 negative yeah here you go here's your here's your picture 16 by 20 ready to go um so yeah so that's that's what this is built for and the load bearing weight on this you're gonna love this uh since they've just switched to this uh, aluminum it's not the cast anymore it's now this when i kind of got into this and bought this they'd switch this aluminum the load bearing weight for the legs and the head, you better put your seatbelt on. 145 pounds. So that that should pretty much hold anything. So you could probably even use this to jack up your car to, uh, you know, to change your tires if you need to if you get a flat. Or uh, as I kind of kid with people, I said, you know, if I ever get dropped off in the Arctic or someplace that's freezing, I can always take this, and if I get stranded, I could burn one leg a day and uh, stay warm and and use this for firewood. So that's <laughs> <laughs> good too so anyway all kidding aside is a great option if you're going to be doing studio photography if you're not going to be going very far if you have a way you can throw this in like a little collapsible wagon again if you watch that um, old car city video you'll see a little blue wagon i carry behind me and you can see me set all this up would i do this again absolutely not um, as far as taking it anywhere would I buy this for medium format or for even 8x10? Absolutely not. It is just way too heavy. Um, I think what I'm going to end up doing with this is um, taking the whole, the case, the legs, and the head, and I will be uh, selling that on a form or something down the road. So, anyway, great, great uh, product, just not for me, and it's too heavy. So, that led me to, I like the stability of this and I like the, you know, the big head. I just needed something to, I could carry with. Um, so the Manfrotto, the first one we looked at was too wobbly. This thing is solid as a rock, but it's just too darn heavy. So I needed kind of something with this stability, but with the portability of the Manfrotto. So after a bunch of research and uh, looking around and asking questions, I did come up with a solution that I'm gonna share with you here in a minute. Okay, so after doing some research, and I think I have finally found my answer. So this would be a great option for if you're shooting DSLR, medium format, or I'd say up to 8x10. Um, even with my camera, it weighs 20 pounds. If you have one of those newer, lighter weight 8x10s, this will definitely work. If you're anything over 8x10, I... Um, the tripod can handle it's the head that might be an issue, but I can show you a way around that. So what did I end up doing to be able to make this work for me? Again, I needed light, stability, and price. I have, um, many, many years ago, I thought I was Hercules and I tried to lift a <clears throat> TV stand. And in one of those old 32 inch TVs that actually had the back end on it, not these little flat screen things. And my back suffered some injuries, so now I have sciatica, stenosis, and uh, bulging discs. So I do have some back issues. So me trying to carry the Reese tripod was just, it was torture. So I need something mainly that was light, that would be very stable, and something I could hike with eventually. So lots of research, and of course, once again, ask some questions, and people have their answers all over the, you know, all over the board. One thing that kind of came up is everybody said, oh, you need to get a Gitzo. Got to get a Gitzo. Gitzo is where it's at. Go buy a Gitzo. Don't even waste your time asking any more questions. Go get a Gitzo. So I looked up Gitzo, and for what I was looking for, one of the things I was looking for is I needed that apex, the part where the legs come together on that round piece. I wanted that to be as wide as possible like the Reese that we looked at. That was six inches because we found the Manfrotto was two inches, and I didn't want to get into that again. So, uh, Gitzo, 
was like sixteen hundred dollars i said holy moly after i resuscitated myself after having a heart attack i went uh okay that's an option <laughs> Um, I'm a broke school teacher, so I don't always have $1,600 just laying around for a tripod. We had a gentleman that came to our local photo club, and he was sponsored by Gitzo. And I noticed his camera set up. He was a wildlife photographer and had one of these huge lenses, uh, either 600 or, or 800 millimeter lens, on this tripod. And I said, that does not look like a Gitzo. So he had told the story of... Now, he was sponsored by Gitzo. Gitzo had sent him this tripod. Now, he's one of these guys that takes his whole rig, picks the whole thing up, goes out into the water, so he's up chest deep, okay? We're talking Florida now, partly. He's an international photographer, but I don't know. I have lived in Florida long enough. I don't want to go in that deep of water if I can't see the bottom of it. So, anyway, so he's, he's hardcore. So, now he's got the Gitzo with this very expensive setup this deep in water. And he said at the end of the day, when he got done, he uh, tried to clean it. And the, the screws were the, the screw locks had gotten junk in it. And basically, it rendered it useless. So he sent it back to Gitzo and said, try again. Uh, <laughs> it didn't work. So he actually was shooting Enduro or Enduro, however you want to say it. And that's what he's been using. He said, you can um, flush out the threads and stuff. And he said, without any problems. So I kind of kept that in the back of my mind while I was thinking about this project. So again, after testing and looking and pricing and all this other stuff, um, I decided, you know what? B&H has them. They were on sale. I'll get one. And if I don't like it, I got 30 days to send it back. So I didn't have it like the Reese tripod. You pay ahead, you wait and there's no returns that's it it's one shot deal um, this other one i got at a local uh, camera store the manfrotto so i could have took that one back i mean it's, it was fine it's great it's still it is a great tripod so i figured what the heck i'll throw the dice and i'll see and my big question was so if the Gitzo was like around sixteen hundred dollars this one was so much less my first instinct was what's wrong with it <laughs> um, i've always been in the camp of by quality, buy once. Because there's been too many other times where I've tried to buy cheap and then you buy the, you end up buying the thing that you, you wanted anyway and now you're out because you bought the cheap thing so you're actually out more money. So I was a little nervous about buying this because of the fact that it was so much less money. So let's open it up. And so it, now this comes with everything I'm about to show you. In fact, there's one thing I forgot to put in here before we got started. I will pull that over here for a minute. So everything I'm about to show you is all part of the package price. There's like the case wasn't extra. The some of the other things I'm going to go over were not extra. This is the way it came from B&H from the manufacturer. So. All right. So the case, first of all, has a very nice. This case is built really, really well. I was surprised because my other one's really thin fabric. This one is like really nice nylon or whatever it is they made it out of. It's got, of course, the carry handle. And what they did here on the back is I've only got one of these out, but if you want to, you can, you notice this kind of may look familiar. This is a um, backpacking strap. So you can pull the other one out and clip it. And then you've got, you can throw it over and use it, you know, if you want to backpack with it. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't, I've only used the one because once I have my big F64 backpack on, this uh, basically goes around my shoulder around my neck and then hangs down to one side so that's the way I use it anyway so let's open this up and again very very well built again nobody's paying me to tell you this stuff I am telling you exactly um, what I think and what I found and what I would do if it was me to buy over again so when I first opened this up for the very first time I was blown away and again I'll get a uh, tight shot of this but this is basically what is in here and what they Enduro has done is they've got these adjustable things to hold straps, I should say, to hold the tripod legs and the head, whatever it is you decide to do. And they even put it in this nice fabric um, little bag. I was totally blown away. I was like, wow, they actually took the time to make sure that this is, you know, on scratch. This is carbon fiber, by the way, it is not uh, aluminum. So I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And online, I had saw that you had the choice of 
what they call these like little orbital feet or spikes. And I didn't want those. I just wanted a plain old rubber foot. And this came with that. However, this is this is my Ziploc bag full of goodies. So when I opened this, this is what was it. There's a little pouch in here that you get. And this is everything that comes with it. So I just pull this out. Here is those orbital feet. I'll just take one out of here so you guys can see kind of what they look like. So this would screw into your, if I go like that, I'll show it better. Uh, it'll screw into the bottom of the tripod or legs, and then these will move around. Again, I have not played with these. They're pretty stiff because I've first time I've actually taken them out of the bag. But there you go. So these are those little rubber feet that will then sit on a surface, and then you can kind of put this wherever. And these are a pretty good size. Um, at least they're bigger than a half dollar anyway. So anyway, so there's that if you want that. This pouch came with it. And in here, you got tools. And here's the spike feet. So if you want to take the rubber feet off, you can put these in. And there you go. So, and then you've got the wrenches and everything, you know, if you're out and about and you want to change it. So I thought, wow, that's pretty nice that they give you this little pouch. Um, and there's a place here in the, again, I'll try to turn this around. So you guys can see there's a little pocket here this was all in here when i got it so if you can kind of see this little mesh pouch right here so this was all in there and so you're good to go i pulled it out simply because i'm trying to save some weight and here's a little uh operating instructions as you can see it's not even been opened i guess you're supposed to read these i don't know i'm a guy i'm not supposed to read instructions i'm supposed to figure it out and break something and then read the instructions right okay so uh here we go so basically i just pulled this out and went oh, okay well let's see what's in here again very very nice case and we'll take this um this has like a little thing to hold it we'll just undo that oh one other thing about this besides the 30-day uh, warranty or i should say 30-day return policy is the warranty is five years right off the bat and they do allow you to, I looked up online and they asked, that was one of the questions is, can you use this in water? And they said, yes. And they explained just white, uh, if you're gonna be out like in the Florida salt water, that kind of stuff, make sure you go home, hose it down real good with fresh water. Or if you're in fresh water, just go home and use clean water. And then take uh, the, the, they recommend unscrewing the feet, which will then, there's a threaded hole in the bottom and then just laying the whole thing out in the sun and then that'll allow the moisture to go out the end of the, the tubes. So, five years right off the bat. However, one of the things you get with this stuff um, is a warranty card and you go online and then you will put in your serial number, which I'll show you where that is. It's a little, a little sneaky to find, but it's, in there, it's on here. Uh, it goes from five years to 10 years. Now, I was like, 10 year warranty? How do you beat that? So. All right, so let's see what we got here. So let's take our bag off. And I've never had a twist lock legs before. I've always had the flip locks. When I first pulled this out, I went, holy cow. Um, I was just totally amazed by the build quality of this. So a couple things I was looking for after I'd been through these other tripods is I did not want a center column. I wanted three sections. I did not want four or five because less sections is more stable. And of course, I wanted the nice big uh, apex. So we'll go over the twist locks in a minute. But you know, initially when this was together, I thought, holy cow. I mean, look at the presentation of this. This is really nice. It's got these uh, leg protectors or warmers, whatever you want to call it. So when you have it on your shoulder, you know, it makes it nice and comfortable. Did not have to buy these. It came with it. Totally shocked. And then it's got this little weight hook here in the middle, which you may or may not be able to see. So when it is uh, like so, you can put your bag on there. In case I forget to tell you, the load bearing weight of this is 66 pounds. So this tripod as it sits right now, five pounds. So five pounds uh, plus the weight of the bag, I'm not sure. Let's call that a pound just to make it easy. But this is very, very stable. Um, it does have the option to where you can use this little ratchet here and you don't even need any, any tools. I'm just going to weight this down because it's a little breezy out here today. 
And you can put a video bowl in here. So if you're into video photography, this, by the way, is a little over three and a half inches. So it's not the six and it's not two. So this is one thing I really kind of sacrificed is I wanted the biggest apex possible to, um, to work with this. So I wasn't sure, but I thought, well, again, I got 30 day return period. I'll see what I think. It does have these notches here that you can pull out and then extend the legs wherever you think you want it to go and then just push them back in and they will lock into place like so. So that's pretty simple. Okay. Um, before I forget, this is the Enduro Stealth GIT403. That's the one I ended up getting. It's not their biggest one and it's not the smallest one. It's part of their Grand Series, in case you want to check that out. So it is built for bigger cameras, and the size of these tubes are really, really nice. So, all right, so basically, as far as the, um, these are really big, and they're nice and rubbery, so they're easy to grab, and with like a half a lock, I don't know if you saw me turn it, like, like that much, and it's unlocked. So you just tighten it back down, give it another little half a turn or so, and here we go. So this probably won't even fit in the video, but yeah. So anyway, you get the point. It's it's pretty long. So if that's all in there or not. But again, this skin you can go ahead and just loosen these. And you'll feel. I don't know if they're all like this. This is my first carbon fiber tripod. But when you uh, put the legs back in, you can feel the air coming out of here. So that might be good if you get water in here to help push the water out. Again, the rubber feet will unscrew, so then you can uh, put your spike feet on or those other little feet if you like. Again, no center column. And there is a level that it does come with, and there's a place here if you want to get your own tripod strap. So, very, very stable, light, and I thought the price was reasonable for, um, you know, it wasn't Gitzo. <laughs> Gitzo was just, to me, it was just out of sight. And again, after seeing that other fellow's Enduro, I thought, well, that's a pretty nice built tripod. This thing is all finished beautifully, uh, again, with a 10 year warranty. So I left the question of, all right, we found the right tripod legs. Light comes with the bag, you saw everything, very versatile. So am I gonna screw the camera right onto here? I don't think so. So did some more research. And what I really wanted to buy was from the Reese company. They have a, I think it's called a J250 head. It's a smaller head of like the great big one that I showed you. Uh, it was only a four inch plate. So I tried to connect with them and just couldn't seem to make that happen. So I did some research online and you won't believe what I found. So here, is, doesn't this look familiar? Looks pretty, almost like a carbon copy, isn't it? So I went on eBay, and I'll put the listing on, on the video as well, and I, I searched for large format tripod head, and this company came up. It's called Lu Lind, L-U-L-A-N-D. They're out of China. Um, so I, the price uh, was cheaper than Reese for this, no shipping, and then eBay had a coupon for up to, I think it was 25 or $50 off. They were running like a spring Black Friday special. I guess that's becoming the new thing now is let's have Black Friday all year. Good for us consumers, that's for sure. So I said, all right, well, let me take a chance. You know, this wasn't terribly expensive. Uh, it's got the four inch top that I was looking for, and it's this is, this uh, can be adjusted so this does spring loaded like the other one. It does have the leaf springs like the other one does. So you can see all that, just like before. And it's got this lever over here. One thing this one does have that the Reese does not is when you screw this down, you can then pan. So the other one, what you have to do with the Reese is you actually have to loosen the head, pan it, then retighten it. There's not a separate pan function. So this one, does pan now you can get this in a four inch or a six inch so why did i not get this in a six inch weight this is less than three pounds 
The Reese one was six. So again, I'm all about trying to save weight and stability. So basically, like anything else, this is really exciting, I know, screwing a head on top of a tripod. If you've never tried it before, it's all the rage. <laughs> so there you go. So now I've got my, if I loosen this and try to make it somewhat straight, but you guys get the point, <clears throat> excuse me. So there we go. So this is my new setup. I have the uh, Enduro Stealth GIT 403 with this um, head that I got from, actually came from Hong Kong and I got it in six days. I live in Florida. I didn't think that was too bad. Free shipping. So uh, I have mounted my camera on this. Now because you, you'll see that the apex on the tripod is 90 millimeter. And the Gitzo was 100 millimeter. So that's the other thing I had to ask myself, is 10 millimeter worth a whole lot more money? I said, no, I don't think so. That this particular tripod head, the, the bottom plate is 98 millimeter. And again, the tripod itself is 90 millimeters. So I've only got four millimeters off on each side. And it almost looks like a dead match to me when I look at it, unless it's so small that you can't see it. So I'm using all of the bearing surface on here, which I wasn't on the Manfrotto. You saw, or um, you know, you're going to see that uh, it was too small. the The head was overly big for the for the tripod head. So I'm using the whole bearing surface here. I got four inches. I've got this. This is over three and a half inches. Um, so by the time I get my camera on here, guess what? This thing is super solid. It fits in this bag, which is probably just a little bit big, but they probably figure by the time you put a head on here. Um, so if we, you know, if I collapse this down, just to kind of show you, let's just set this in front. So just, you know, I've got a little bit of wiggle room, so it fits comfortably, but this is not a bear to carry. It's not heavy, uh, it's stable. So if I was doing it all over again, Probably what I would buy, depending upon your type of photography, if you were to, say, just do DSLR photography, digital photography, and you had a smaller DSLR or even an SLR film camera, you would not need anything this big. This would be way overkill. Um, I would look at the Enduro line to see if you have something that would work for you. If you're shooting bigger, um, say, for example, you are a wildlife shooter shooting those 600, 800 millimeter lenses, I would definitely look at this particular one. This will definitely hold the weight of your lens and your camera, no problem. And if you're shooting 4x5, you don't necessarily need something this heavy for 4x5 or even 5x7. But if you're shooting 8x10, this will work. And even my camera that's uh, 20 pounds is pretty solid with this. So my goal is to uh, shoot a lightweight 8x10 eventually. So I'm going to get my camera weight down. I'm going to get, I've already got the tripod weight down. So then I can go hiking and I have to worry about, you know, taking aspirin every four hours or whatever to try to keep the back pain down. So this is really a great solution. So again, uh, check out the Enduro line. I'm very happy with it. I think it's worth every, every dollar that I paid for it. And again, you can get all kinds of heads. It does have the 3816 uh, shaft that comes out of, out of here. It will accept uh, most tripod heads. So you can put anything you want on it. And again, you can switch this out for a video bowl if you need to, if you're going to be doing that, that kind of work. So yeah, so that's definitely what I would recommend. All right, so I hope that helps with your tripod shopping, maybe tripod uh, solutions to me if you have any uh, issues as far as portability, price, weight, anything like that. Um, again, it's I've been doing this for full time for about 12 years now, and this has been my progression into, I know it's kind of strange, I went from digital. Um, in high school, I did shoot some 35 millimeter. I went to digital, shot that for a long time and then uh, jumped into 8x10 film. But uh, the 8x10 film, as if you've seen any of my other videos, uh, just gives me a lot more joy, joy to use and it slows me down. And again, I like to make really, really big prints. And the tripod is definitely a great tool for doing that. So, 
As always, I appreciate you joining me and maybe you might consider hitting the like button if you enjoyed this content and maybe even subscribing if you want to be in the know when I do more videos. As always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.